I never had a bedtime story read to me when I was a kid. So I thought I'd write a bedtime story and read it. So if you've never had a bedtime story read to you or you miss it, this story is for you. It's titled Juliana and the Stone. Long ago, in a land far away, there was a long, wide stream that ran slowly down the side of a mountain. The stream bed was covered with small white and black pebbles. Many, many years passed. The spring that fed the stream dried up. All that was left was a very flat, wide bed of small black and white pebbles. The land on either side was rich and fertile. People began to come up the mountain and build farms. Time passed, more people came. After yet more time, where there was just a stream, there was now a very big village with a wide road through the middle of it, paved with little black and white pebbles. The people of the village were mostly Christians. Some were nice, some were not nice, not so nice. They were normal folks. Winters in the mountains were long and very cold, so everyone wore long, heavy robes that almost touched the ground, with many deep folds to keep out the cold air. In this village lived a girl named Juliana. She was sixteen. She lived with her father, Jacob, who owned a pottery shop. Her mother died when she was only five, so her father was both dad and mom as she grew up. Some would say they were poor, but they were rich in their faith in Jesus. One day, as she was preparing lunch for her father, there was a loud knock at the door. Juliana's skin crawled, and she felt a little sick to her stomach. She knew that knock. It was Hebok, the moneylender. Hebok had taken one bath in his life, given by his mother and aunt, right after he was born. He was selfish, greedy, had terrible manners, and smelled awful. Good day, Jacob, Hebok said in a voice pleasant and nice. Juliana knew not to trust that voice. His heart was colder than the coldest winter. Good day, said Jacob, not looking up from his work at the potter's wheel. Hebok stood tall and crossed his arms across his chest. I just stopped by to remind you that the money I loaned you months ago is coming due soon. A hard winter is coming. I can loan you more if you need. You may not have enough money to buy supplies. You and your lovely daughter could starve, he leered at Juliana. At that moment, she had two choices. She could shout at him that they would never borrow money from such a horrible person ever again, or she could just be silent and go back to work cleaning dishes. She chose to be silent. Jacob said, Not today, Hebok. I have many projects, many buyers. Business is good. Hebok's voice was calm, but one could feel evil in his tone. Sometimes a business can vanish overnight. He stared at Juliana, then abruptly left, leaving the door open. Juliana rushed to close it from the cold wind. Winter was coming early. Back in the, her small kitchen, she placed her hands on the counter and gazed at her mother's cooking pots, cups, dishes, and spoons. On the wall hung three wooden spoons, a small one, medium-sized one, and a very big spoon for making stew in the big pot. These were precious few things left to remind her of her mom. Juliana, ever since she was very small, believed in the scary story of the ghost wolf. It was big with long black fur and smelled awful. It would follow behind you as you walked home. No matter which way you turned to see it, it would jump left or right so you couldn't see it. She believed it might hide under her bed. Each night when she was little, as her mother was tucking her into bed, Juliana would say, Mommy, you have to check. Her mom would look under the bed and say, No, nothing there, no ghost wolf. Juliana would say, Good, and smile. Her mom would say, If I ever see that ghost wolf in our house, I'll smack him right on his head with my big spoon. Juliana giggled as her mom pulled up the big, warm winter blanket under her chin and kissed her on the forehead and said, Sweet dreams, baby. Her father's voice snapped her out of her pleasant moment. Honey, if business doesn't get better, I don't know how I can repay Hebok's loan. 
Don't worry, Daddy. We'll find a way, she said, trying to hide the fear she felt. The winter would be very cold. I just wish I could help in some way, she stood with her arms at her side, her hands balled into fists. Daddy, I feel so useless. Her father stood up and faced her. His hair was starting to get gray, and there were wrinkles on his face. Juliana, never say that. Before God created everything, he whispered your mother's name and my name and your name and the name of everyone who has ever lived and everyone who ever will live. God has a purpose for you. Trust in him and you will find your purpose. A few days passed. The next day was warm, warm for the cold mountains. Juliana and her father walked across the big town square. She wore her mother's long coat, still a little too big for her. She could hear the little pebbles clicking against each other as the bottom of her coat scraped the ground. Her mom was the best coat maker in the town. After all the years, she still felt like it was new. Good morning, Hebok's voice startled her. Hebok turned to her father. I've given this much thought. If you allow me the great pleasure of marrying your daughter, I will not only forgive your debt to me, I will give you fifty pieces of gold. At this moment it seemed Juliana had only two choices. She could shout that she would never marry a lying, thieving pig like him. She had seen him throw whole families out of their homes for a debt they could not pay. Or, to save her father's honor, she would marry Hebok. Before she could choose, her father said, as her father, this will take much time to think about. She was proud of her dad. What he said didn't promise anything. The next day, her father had a troubled look on his face. What's wrong, Daddy? she asked. Afraid of his answer, her father picked up a bowl he had just made and stared at it. For the last few days, no one has bought a thing. I don't understand why. My prices are fair. He was right. Something was wrong. But in business, sales seemed to rise and fall. Just just had to be a low sales time. She put on her mom's coat and walked through the town. She stopped at the shop of Ben the Potter. He had several customers buying his wares. Hello, Ben. Business looks good for you, she smiled. Business is great, he thought. Hebok loaned me twenty pieces of silver at no interest, and I can repay any time I want, and I can sell my pots for practically nothing. Juliana's good mood flew away like a dried leaf in a strong wind. She walked to Bruck, the potter on the other side of town. Hebok had given him the same kind of loan. Her father's business would be ruined. In a small town, gossip travels fast. By the next day, everyone knew about Juliana and Hebok. Juliana and her father were walking across the wide town square when Hebok walked toward them. Jacob! Hebok shouted. You owe me money, and the loan has come due. My offer still stands. Let me marry your daughter, and the debt will be cancelled. At this moment, it seemed Julie had only two choices. She could marry him and live a horrible life, or she could shout that she would never marry him. Hebok would then have her father thrown into debtor's prison, and she would have to marry Hebok anyway, just to survive the winter. No, she cried. By this time there was a very large crowd watching. Hebok noticed this. They were future customers. Hebok raised his hand and shouted, I'm a fair man. I always treat my customers right. I propose this. I will put one black pebble and one white pebble in my hat. Juliana will pick a stone. If it is white, she does not have to marry me, and the debt will be cancelled. If she picks the black pebble, she will marry me, and I will cancel her father's debt. He looked around, feeling smug about how clever he was. He reached down between the folds of his coat. Only Juliana could see that he picked up two black stones, dropped them into his upside-down hat, and raised it high above her head. At this time she had two choices again. She could expose him as a fraud, after which he would have her father thrown into debtor's prison, and she could show the black pebble and have to marry him. These were not choices. They were both terrible fates. She didn't know what to do. She remembered her father's advice when she was a child. 
pray as though everything depended on Jesus, then act as though everything depended on you, but pray first. Julia's, Juliana's eyes brimmed with tears. She silently prayed to Jesus, pleading, Jesus, would you please open the sky and strike Hebok dead with a lightning bolt? Jesus, would you please open the earth and let it swallow him up? Jesus, please tell me what to do. Juliana felt the air around her change. She had finally asked the right question. She felt calm. All her fears instantly left her. She felt power, as though she was wearing invisible armor. She couldn't see him, but Jesus was standing right next to her. She felt his hand ever so gently rest on her shoulder. An idea dropped into her head. She raised her empty hand above her head. Her right hand went deep between the folds of her robe, and she dropped the pebble. It instantly disappeared among the other white and black pebbles. The crowd groaned in disappointment. Wiping the tears from her eyes, she looked up and said, Wait, we can tell which pebble I had by looking in Hebok's hat and see which one he had. Hebok seethed with anger. He dared not say he cheated. I am a fair man, he shouted to the crowd. I never cheat. You can always trust me to loan you money fairly. He pulled the black pebble from his hat and showed it to the crowd, then threw it hard on the ground. I will cancel the debt. Jacob owes me nothing. He glared at Juliana as she steadily gazed at him. He hated the look she was giving him. It was fearless. The air around her began to slowly change again. She heard a voice in her head. It was wonderfully gentle. Someday Hebok will be ready. He will ask the right question, and I will save him. She had no more choices that she would hate. All she had to do was pray and ask the right questions. The world in her mind was different. Even the winter seemed pleasant. She turned, took her father's hand, and they walked back to their home. What happens to her and her father now? Well, that's another story. But remember this. There was no one else on this earth exactly like you. You are special. So, Heidi Knight, sleep tight. Pleasant dreams.